What's up guys, my name is Avi Spira and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing my Olympus 40 to 150 f 4.0 to 5.6 lens. So this lens, besides being really long, is a pretty decent lens. I got it on eBay for $55. I'll put a link down in the description to either an Amazon link or another eBay link. And you guys definitely should check this lens out. I got it for my Panasonic G7. That's a micro four thirds camera. Of course, this lens is micro four thirds. This lens allowed me to get some really great far range shots. Basically, I got it right before going to Colorado, and I knew that there will be a lot of mountains in the distance. There will be some animals, uh, some wildlife, some great landscape opportunities. So I wanted a lens that can definitely zoom in and get me that shot that I wanted without compromising you know, quality by cropping. This lens did allow me to do that. It also turned out to be a pretty decent portrait lens, better than the kit lens that comes with Panasonic G7, the 14-42. to Also, that's an f3.5 to 5.6. So you get a little bit more aperture, but this one actually takes surprisingly good portraits. Now, of course, I'm going to show you guys some images on screen now. You can see a nice landscape, I hope, of a mountain. Tell me what you guys think. And let's throw in a few portraits in there from photo shoot opportunities I had before going to Colorado. I'm going to be showing you images right now of some pictures that I'm able to take and what this lens allows you to do comparing to when you have the kit lens. So this lens, I do want to say, is a budget lens. It's not something that, you know, if you're a professional, you're going to go ahead and want. It's more like, I need a second lens, which one should I get? and why. So I'm going to explain to you guys why this is a great pickup, a great second lens to have for your Panasonic G7. Alright guys, so now we're going to be taking a look at the Panasonic G7 with the kit lens, the 14 to 42 f3.5 to 5.6 that comes with it. So right now, there we go, fully zoomed out. You can see that my aperture is at 3.5. My shutter speed is at 500 since I'm shooting out a window. This should be okay. And at the farthest range possibility, right? So this is the widest angle I could possibly get. That's the picture I take. And then fully zoomed in, this is the picture that I'm able to take. Now that, those settings were perfect. So let's go ahead and take it again at 125. But fully zoomed out, giving you that 3.5 aperture, you can take this same image at 500. There you have the range capabilities and the aperture capabilities. I'm gonna edit those pictures, put them on screen now. I'm going to go ahead, get out the Olympus lens and show you what that can do with the exact same camera. Okay guys, I now have the Olympus lens on the camera and I do wanna say that it comes with a slightly bigger lens cap. Of course, lighting isn't so great, but you do have a unique lens cap that comes with this lens. And here you can see the lowest is actually 4.0, not 3.5. So you're gonna be getting less light when it comes to aperture. So I can't even take this picture at 500 since I have to do it at 4.0. So let's go ahead and take it at 250. And this is the maximum, basically widest angle that you're able to get on this camera, which is already 40 compared to the max angle on the kit lens is 42. So this is going to basically allow you to take further range pictures, but you're never going to be able to do a close up. You're not going to be able to do anything in your studio, kind of say, unless you have, of course, a wide studio. And let's go ahead and take the picture at the minimum. And then I'm going to zoom in max. So you can see why this lens got my attention. This allowed me to take amazingly close pictures to mountains, squirrels, different animals, everything, I was able to get some pretty incredible portraits from a distance. So if you're in the stalking business or something like that, this might also be the lens for you. Look at that. That building is approximately five New York City blocks away. And I'm able to take that pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and move that up. So yeah, this lens, one of the bad sides is when you are fully zoomed in, you have this long, weird looking shape that people can make jokes about. Of course, you do get that bigger lens when it's not zoomed in, which 
in a way looks more intimidating as a photographer you're able to say I have a more professional looking camera because it's bigger anyone that doesn't know anything about cameras thinks that it's just the way the world works and it's not that case but the lens itself is a great lens I'm gonna show you the images on screen again and you're gonna be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison and you tell me if you think that this lens is worth picking up or not. I got it again for a pretty cheap price of $55 refurbished on eBay. And it works phenomenally, especially for that price. I'd say this lens isn't worth $150. But if you're able to get it for $100 or less, I think it's a great second lens and worth picking up. Alright, so I do hope you all enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Comment down below any questions you have about this lens, the other lens, the Panasonic G7. I'll be leaving down in the description a kit. You can go to the kit.com website and check out the gear that I personally use. And I'll also add some Amazon, eBay links for this lens.